from our studios in the heart of Silicon Valley, Palo Alto, California. This is a CUBE Conversation. Hi. Welcome to the Cube Studio for another Cube Conversation, where we go in depth with thought leaders, creating new business outcomes with technology. I'm your host, Peter Burris. One of the biggest challenges that enterprises face as they try to get more value out of their data is how to establish the practices, how to establish the processes, and the tooling necessary to both discover data, liberate data, and communicate data and its value to the organization. To have that conversation, we've got a great guest, Aaron Kalb, who's a co-founder and chief data officer of Relation. Aaron, welcome to the conversation. Peter, thank you for having me. So give us a quick update. What's going on with Relation? Things with Relation are very, very exciting. So you know, from the very beginning, we had one main goal, to create technology that empowers people to be more curious, uh, make better choices, uh, to help them find relevant data, understand it, trust it, use it, and, and reuse it at the organization. And we're just very happy to keep getting more and more customers and make a broader and broader impact through them. Now, showing how unbelievably attentive I am, I noticed that I, that you are now chief data officer, so your title's changed. What, what, what does that entail? What's going on? Yeah, it's a pretty recent change and one we're very excited about. I think from the very beginning, you know, we've been preaching you know, a data-driven organization, but we haven't been able to practice what we've preached as much since we've been comparatively so much smaller than our customers. What's exciting now is that we've collected enough data and a wide enough network of customers that there's an opportunity to really be more data-driven internally and also to kind of have all of these chief data officers and other data people, data nerds like me in our network to synthesize the learnings across all of them about how to build a data culture um, and kind of take that in and share it back out so we can all go through this journey together. So I'm going I'm to tell you, I'm, I'm, I have been a chief data officer skeptic, but I'll explain why. But if I can just summarize what you just said, there's going to be an operational part of your job internally, but also an advocacy part of your job externally to help catalyze some of your conversations. But let me tell you why I've been something of a skeptic, and, and you tell me how uh, things are going to change, You know what, what vector we're on, so to speak. Mm -hmm. CDO as a, as a job often was something that people went for because of digital change or new media change or new types of marketing. It's been a job that's been all over the map. It's had mm. different definitions, different roles, different sets of responsibilities. When I think of any chief, I say you give the chief title to someone who's going to generate you know, superior returns on the assets entrusted to them. So what that means to me is that the chief data officer should be someone who's going to create competitive or superior returns on the data assets that have been entrusted to them. Is that kind of how you see it too? That's exactly right, and this is a term and a title that we're borrowing from our customers who've been uh, very, very successful with it. And, uh, and the goal is exactly that. First of all, to protect the, the, the data and ensure that it's being used appropriately and is well governed, that's the defense. But then going on offense and ensuring that all that data is actually driving business value and business impact, that's the fundamental uh, role of, uh, of the position. The only thing I would, I would maybe amend in what you said is, um, you know, as chief, you know, my management style is really, it's just about empowering everybody in the organization within the division and across the company to really drive those impacts. Well, it's a leadership job. Exactly. Yeah, so a chief is, you, you know, you're, you're, supposed to, you're supposed to use the resources at your disposal to generate returns out of those resources. And it's obviously it's a leadership job, but let's, let's walk through that a little bit. Not so much focusing on how Alation's CDO is going to operate, but let's talk about your customers. Because one of the observations I'd make is that Alation now has a large enough footprint and presence in the industry where uh, you now have significant numbers of customers, and I'm sure you're seeing the variety of insights and practices that customers are using to get value out of data. So I got to believe that partly this is discovering those new practices, those new procedures, turning that into a pedagogy, something that folks can actually use to improve the way they do things, and then helping Alation build or participate in the tool chains necessary to actually establish those disciplines. How far off am I? You are spot on. So, so um, as you said, you know, we, we have over 100 production customers now, well over that, and they all are different in different ways depending on, on their geography and their vertical, but there are many commonalities we see. 
Um, and our goal is to basically learn from all of them and synthesize those learnings and then push them back out to our network and also apply them internally. And sometimes applying that means making changes to our software, and sometimes it means just sharing best practices and thought leadership within our network and, and beyond. So to give a very particular example, you know, one thing that we'd thought about a little bit, but we really learned from our customers was the power that um, kind of competition and, 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 and kind of game theory can, can play in helping people be successful in their data initiatives. Oh, gamification. Gamification, okay, exactly. Got it. Yeah, so we, we, we saw, for example, um, uh, some of our customers did what they called d data duels or m metadata duels, where different departments would compete to document their data more thoroughly for accurate outcomes. And, and they would get cakes that had, you know, metadata on them. <laughs> Which is kind of funny, one time we'd seen the word metadata printed on a cake, probably in the history of baking. <laughs> um, and meanwhile, a different customer uh, in, in a different region, different vertical, um, came out with a docu-jam, which is taking the idea of a hackathon, and that's a little bit less competitive and a little more collaborative, people kind of shoulder to shoulder doing data documentation. It's a very similar thing of using kind of human psychology to better drive forward data projects. Um, we saw it in two different places and we thought, okay, how can we abstract out a principle from this? And we're looking both at integrating some of these principles directly into our product and also sharing other ways that different customers could benefit from the basic concept. All right, so mm -hmm. where are we? You've got 100 plus, 100 plus customers mm -hmm. now. You're an acknowledged leader in the, in the catalog world. Uh, we, we generally believe the catalogs are going to be an important feature of virtually every successful data-driven digital business mm -hmm. uh, because it's going to be one of the places where you actually store data and uh, other assets derived from that data, models and whatnot. So where are we as, as this new CDO, where are we in the adoption of what you today would regard as the best practices? How's that happening in the industry? We, we have a skills gap. Are we starting to see that be closed a bit as as more companies start to gain the experience they need to be successful in this? Yeah, you know, it's funny, there's sort of a, a, a learning curve with any new technology or any principle, and we see uh, customers and prospects all along that curve, and we're still kind of mapping out uh, the shape. Uh, just to give a sense of different extremes, you know, a few years ago, what everybody was talking about, people would say, I'm a data person, and there's people in my company who just don't get it. Mm -hmm. who, who, who see the data, and instead of being appropriately skeptical and saying, I'm not sure how this was sourced, they'll just say, ah, data schmeda, here's how I used to do it at my old job, and we're just going to do it that way because it's how we've always done it. And, and you know, there, was, there was that sort of uh, defensiveness or resistance to data. Um, now we're seeing some customers who have jumped way past that. I was talking to a data scientist at one of our customers who said basically um, they, they, they have a recommendation engine uh, in their enterprise, and people who years ago might have been completely ignoring it are now just blindly doing whatever it said. Mm. And, and she was saying- It has its own set of implications. <laughs> it does, and she said, look, you know, as a data scientist, I know how the, 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 the uh, sausage is made for this engine. I wouldn't want to eat that sausage. It worries me that people are just putting it in their mouth, so to speak, in this elaborate metaphor. Right. And so I think, I think you know, the pendulum can swing back and forth, and what we're trying to work on with our customers is, how do you teach individuals to engage in that data culture, to be skeptical in the right ways, not defensive, but to ask, where did this come from? How is it computed? You know, the questions that can actually help you interpret it correctly and put it to use. Uh, and I'd go to the other extreme of, you know, basically, a. Uh, 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 deferring to the algorithm entirely and taking out all human judgment. Well, and I think that's the important thing, is that all of these, any system is a combination of machines doing things and human beings doing things. Now, we'll, we'll take out those animal-driven systems from many years ago. Machines doing things and people doing things. And you, when you use machines to do things, the tech industry's been really good at diffusing knowledge very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. So it's over time, it's difficult to have your machinery be the source of differentiation. So over time, humans will consistently be the source of differentiation in your business and how they render judgment and what they determine are priorities and the commitments that they make and sustaining and keeping those commitments. So catalog to me seems to be an especially important feature of any digital transformation or data-driven process going forward because it touches people and because people use it, and it will, it will also touch other systems and other elements, but people remain uh, central to catalog design and the notion of catalog experience. Are you seeing that as well, and is that helping you to stay close to these CDOs and you know, 
really driving the people-oriented process or knowledge about people-oriented processes here? Absolutely. Throughout our time at Alation over the last you know, seven years, we've always seen people as extremely central. And I think one of our key differentiators philosophically was where a lot of data management was sort of thinking about what's good for the computer. Oh, we can save a couple bits by right. using some lookup code instead of something that's you know, comprehensible. Um, we said, well, what is the human consumer of data? What do they need? And a lot of our technology has actually been, again, bringing the human back into the fold of what's been too kind of computer and machine dominated. Um, I think the other thing you mentioned that's really critical is we're in an age where automation is very exciting and there are a lot of wins there. One thing that I hear from CDO after CDO that I talk to is a three-phase process for bringing data into the organization. Uh, phase one is, is, is descriptive analytics, what happened last quarter. Then there's predictive analytics, what's going to happen next quarter. And the final goal is prescriptive analytics, where your computer what's tells you what to right do. Now? Yeah, and, and, and where the computer can act you know, before any humans even looked at it or been in, in the loop. And I think it's an interesting aspiration, especially for certain things that are, that are really, really urgent. But um, these are all garbage in, garbage out processes. And the good news is that if you're looking at a place where the humans in the loop, they can say, you know what? That doesn't look right in that graph. And maybe it's a problem with the ETL job or with the source data. And they can set them up for something bad's happened. So I think as you progress down this evolution, there are great rewards, but also greater risks. And our hope is that with a catalog, you can make sure that whatever process you're feeding, instead of garbage in, garbage out, it's the best data that's up to date, that's trustworthy, that's contextualized for the business process. Okay, one last question. Uh, uh, you've, you're now in a new role, operational, external. Uh, what's the first two things that you want to accomplish in this new role, especially on the, as, you, as it pertains to working with your customers? What are you really focused on right now? Yeah, so, so one of our core values at Alation is that we listen as though we, we, we could be wrong because we know that that's why we're a data company is you know, how do we learn from, from uh, uh, numeric and other kinds of signals that come in to always be growing and improving. And so step one, uh, unambiguously, is to listen as much as I can to the incredibly smart, innovative, thoughtful customers that we have and try to synthesize the best learnings across all of them. Mm -hmm. I think the next step is to, then, is to then do that synthesis and say, oh, what do we see that's happening in retail that could pertain to finance or vice versa? And figure out kind of what is that, that curve and how can we kind of either push everybody up the steep parts of the curve so we can all be more data driven and more curious and more rational together, or even have uh, you know, uh, um, the software kind of lower that curve and Great make it point. easier to. Great point. So, so it's faster up or use the tool to, f to flatten the curve. Exactly, it's a very wise man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they mentioned it before the was. interview. Well, Aaron, this has been a great conversation. Once again, I want to thank you for joining us on another CUBE Conversation. Uh, my name is Peter Burris. See you next time. Thank you, Peter. <laughs>